Wheat checks, rice checks, and good hot Wilson present Space Patrol. High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, commander in chief of the Space Patrol. <laughs> In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are attempting to rescue a girl being held captive in a metals factory in the orbit of Jupiter Moon Number 2. They have just entered the cargo hold of the plant and have raised the face plates of their spacesuits. Commander, someone's coming. I can see them through the door at the other end of the cargo hold. Well, that's Torch. Have your ray gun ready. Yes, sir. Hey, Commander, I can't move. Something's holding my feet. Someone turned on a magnetic force field. It's holding our metal space boots. Get out of your suit. Hurry. Commander, look up above Cargo train is coming down on us with an enduring beam on it. We've got to get out of these suits. This magnetic field under us, that beam can crush us. We'll return in just a moment with today's exciting space patrol adventure, Peril Over Jupiter. <laughs> Gang, if ever there was a time to act, this is it. Yes, this is the day to send for that wonderful new space patrol microscope kit Buzz Corey's offering. This is the day because today is the last time we can make this offer. Now, just think, you get the official microscope of the Space Patrol, the microscope that magnifies objects 15 times natural size, a microscope small enough to put in your pocket, yet so powerful it shows you the living creatures in a drop of water, strong all-plastic body, two glass lenses, has removable lens tube. You can take it right from the microscope and use it alone to examine things like the bark on trees or the fungus on damp walls. And with this super microscope, you get four slides. Say you want to look at a blade of grass. Put it between two of the slides, slip them under the microscope, look at the lens tube, and there it is. A blade of grass, 15 times actual size. You see details that amaze you, thrill you, mystify you. But wait, in addition to the microscope and the four slides, you also get a special slide with an atomic particle on it that glows and glows and glows in the dark. So remember, gang, now's the time to act. Now, today, this very morning, is the time to send for your Space Patrol microscope kit. Because today is the last time we can make this thrilling offer. Just buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol. Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. Don't forget your 25 cents. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, Peril Over Jupiter. After completing a mission on Neptune, Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have returned to the man-made planet Terra. Now, in his central office at Space Patrol headquarters, Commander Corey is efficiently clearing up routine business that's accumulated during his absence. He looks up as Happy turns from the communications panel, a troubled frown on his face. What is it, Happy? I hate to disturb you, sir, but it sounds pretty urgent. It's a woman named Carla Markham. She says her life is being threatened. If Major Gray put her through to my office. It must be urgent. I'll talk to her. Yes, sir. This is Commander Corey. May I help you? Commander, this is Carla Markham. My father was Richard Markham. Markham, the metals expert? Yes. I remember your father quite well, Miss Markham. Now tell me, what's this about your life being threatened? Tell the truth, Commander. It hasn't actually been Oh, by whom? By two men named Nelson Sprague and Duke Dorch. For two years they've been getting money from me under false pretenses. Quite a lot of them. How, Miss Martin? When my father passed away, I took charge of his metal processing plant. Space plant in the orbit of Jupiter Moon number two. Yes, I know the one you mean. In about a month, Sprague and Dorch showed up with some documents indicating that my father owed them quite a large sum of money. And the documents were forged? Yes, but I didn't find that out until a few weeks ago. And I refused to pay them any more money. He became quite angry and abusive. Can you prove those documents are forgeries, Miss Markham? Unfortunately, I can't. That's why I didn't go to space to immediately. Also, I'm afraid they could wreck the business. It took my father 20 years to build up with us. I keep paying. Forgery and extortion. And they've also threatened your life? It's hint that I might meet with a serious accident if I cause him any trouble. Miss Markham, where are you now? I'm at the Hotel Terra. Do you have those documents from Sprague and Dort? Yes, I do. Can you be at my office this afternoon at 1500 hours? Yes, Commander. Well, bring all the evidence you have. Goodbye, Miss Markham. Goodbye, Commander. Happy. Yes, sir. Check with Major Roberts and see if you have anything in the files on Nelson Sprague and Duke George. Right, Commander. Well, meanwhile, I'll contact Jupiter headquarters and have them space for information on the Nelson Sprague. Commander, this is Jupiter Moon Number Two. Is 
Spray. Yes, Miss Markham. Dorch and I thought we'd drop in. I am Miss Markham. Uh, I was just going out. If you'll excuse me. We'll only stay a few minutes. Really, I can't talk to you now. If you're in a hurry, just give us what you owe us and we'll be on our way. I don't owe you a cent. I never did and neither did my father. Now, that's where we differ. Now, we can talk privately, Miss Markham. You have no right to force your way into this room. And a nice room it is, too. <laughs> I'll look around if you don't mind. You know, Miss Markham, we were almost ready to blast off to your Jupiter plant, thinking you were there. Then I space upon your chief engineer, and he told me you were here on Terra. Here on business? No concern of yours. I'm afraid it is. You might have caused us to make a long space flight for nothing. Hey, what's this? Did you go with the room? Mr. George, put that down. It's a Venus ceramic, and I don't want it broken. More than a ceramic will be broken if we don't get that money, Miss Markham. You've got all you're going to get. I know now that my father never owed you a single credit. All those contracts were forged. You'll have a hard time proving it. Besides, for your own protection, it would be wise to pay us off completely now. That sounds like a threat, Mr. Stewart. It wouldn't take much of an accident to put that metal plant of yours out of commission. You don't frighten me. Hey, Spray, look at this. Get away from that desk. Look what I found beside the spacer phone. A memo in Carla's handwriting. Give me that. Now, Miss Markham, don't you know it's rude to drag? Laboratory, Space Patrol Headquarters, fifteen hundred dollars. Oh, an appointment with the Commander in Chief. What's this about? It's none of your business. And she's got all our contacts lying there, Sprague. Lucky we dropped in. You're not going to keep that appointment, Miss Markham. Oh yes, I. You're am. going to call it off. We'll call Corey right in front of us and tell him you jumped at wrong conclusions. Then you're going to give us the money in cash. A whole 50,000 credits. I don't have that much money. Not here on Terra. You've got it in your Jupiter bank. We'll blast off for Jupiter right after you talk to Corey. Now get on that phone. But I don't understand, Miss Markham. This morning you seemed very upset. I know. I, I was very foolish. Everything's all straightened out. And you're in no danger? Oh, not in the least. I'm sorry it bothered you. It's just that I've been working hard, and I imagine a lot of how about those two men? Miss Markham, can you hear me? What about those two men? Uh, I was all wrong about them. They've canceled the agreement. I heard from my attorney on Jupiter by space. Oh, I see. And as I told you this morning, Commander, I'm leaving for Jupiter this afternoon. I hope you'll forgive me for being such a bother. Of course, Miss Markham. Thanks for calling. Goodbye, Commander. Will that happen? Yes, sir. Well, that means there's no appointment at 1500. We can get much more work done. Yeah. This morning, she seemed to be sure that she was in danger. And now everything's fine. Well, I guess some women like that, sir. And perhaps the Carla Market has done a pretty good job in operating her father's space plant. That calls for level headed drinking. Well, yeah, like she said, the strain and yeah, all. But wait. This morning, she told me she was planning on staying on Terra for three days. Just now, she said, as I told you this morning, I'm leaving for Jupiter this afternoon. Yeah, that's right. That inconsistency might have been on purpose, maybe. Why? Perhaps she was forced to make that call just now. Uh, by Sprague or Deutsch? Yes. Yeah. I'd have to watch what she said so they wouldn't get suspicious, but I would. Could be, I suppose. The more I think of it, the less likely it is that Paula Martin would accidentally misquote herself. Uh, then, in effect, she's telling you, don't believe anything I'm saying right now. Exactly. Remember that pause? Uh-huh. And I thought I heard a click. She was getting instructions, no doubt. Get an official surface car, Happy. We'll rush over to the Hotel Terra and check. Yes, sir. While you're inside the hotel, I'll stay on the car and watch. Looks like you were right, Commander. What did you find out, Happy? Miss Markham has checked out. The clerk said there were two men with her, and they left ten minutes ago. Did you know where they were going? No, sir, but I talked to the doorman. He heard one of them and told the driver of the surface cab to take him to the spaceport. And that's where we're going. Uh, we could space upon the spaceport and have the guards stop them. There's no telling what Sprague and Dorch might do to Miss Markham if they see they're in a trap. The most we can risk right now is to try to delay a blast off. Pretty nice little cruiser you've got here, Miss Markham. I wouldn't mind having it. Don't worry, Sprague. You will. <laughs> George, Miss Markham doesn't think that's funny. You're thinking of stealing a ship. Just remember that it can be easily traced. Oh, it won't be stolen. I'll rig up a nice legal-looking transfer of ownership. George, check the rear view so see if we're being followed. I've been watching it. We're clear. Good. We'll go to her space plant and have her write us a check. 
We'll take care of the two engineers and fix all your communications equipment so you can't call for help while we're in Jupiter City. If we get the money, we'll see that you're rescued. If we don't, well, we'll find a way to wreck your plant. Mark and Chip, sir. We could overtake them easily. Yeah, for the Sprague and his pals, see us. Just put Miss Markham in danger. Let's just follow them and find out where they're going. By the fact that they're on now, it looks like it'd be Jupiter. Mm-hmm. Perhaps the Markham space plant in the orbit of moon number two. Do you think they'll take her to the plant? Yeah, they might. Oh. oh, what did they turn out at that plant, Commander? High purity metals from ores hauled out from Jupiter. Chiefly zirconium and durium. The advantage of the space plant is the low gravity and the ease of maintaining a perfect vacuum. Uh-huh. The metals can be controlled perfectly by electronic heat fields and magnetic force. For example, a huge ball of molten durium can be suspended inside a purification chamber without touching the side. Wow. And the whole process is automatic. That's right, Happy. Two engineers run the whole thing. I don't want Sprague and Short to know they're being followed. Can't let them get a glimpse of the space patrol ship in their rear view scope. Well, then we'll have to keep this much distance between us until they land. Unless we have another ship. I'm going to space the phone Lowell City Mars and have headquarters send a small cargo ship out to meet us in space. We'll transfer to the cargo ship and we can get closer to Sprague and Dorch without endangering this market. You might as well sit down and relax, Miss Markham. We'll wait here in the plant control room until Dorch gets back. What's he going to do to my crew? Well, it depends. If they behave themselves, they won't get hurt. Oh, here he is now. I got them both, Blake. What did you do to them? I'll just take it easy, miss. I merely put him to sleep with the ray gun. Did he give you any trouble? Nah. <laughs> I got one of them while he was checking some instruments. The other was to sleep in his bunk. He'll be out cold for 24 hours. Nice work. Now, while Miss Markham is writing out a check, we can put all the space upon equipment out of commission. Start with Cargo the... ship JC-302 calling Markham Space Plant, Jupiter 2 orbit. Cargo ship JC-302 calling Markham Space Plant... Are you expecting a cargo ship? Why, uh, the supply ship bringing food for the crew. I thought you said it wasn't due for two days. Well, sometimes it comes early. Cargo ship JC-302 calling Markham Space Plant. You better do something, Spike. Carlin, what's your chief engineer's name? Quickly. Jensen. William Jensen. Okay, keep her quiet, George. I'll handle this. Markham Space Plant. Chief Engineer Jensen here. Go ahead, cargo ship. We've got something for you. Is the cargo airlock clear? It will be. Just unload the stuff. We'll take care of it later. We've got our hands full right now. All right, Jensen, we can handle it. Cargo ship out. Dorch, you go into the cargo hold and keep an eye on them. If they act sociable, impress them that we're very busy. Suppose they see I'm not one of the regular crew. Tell them you're filling in for a week. See that they get away in a hurry. Then you and I will blast off the Jupiter. Open the cargo hatch, Happy. Yes, sir. Open the All right, close the hatch. Open your faceplate, Hap. Now we'll plan our attack. Yes, sir. They move fast and take him by surprise. Probably in the main control room, waiting for us to unload the cargo and leave. Somebody stop. I can see him through the door at the other end of the cargo hole. Oh, that's good. I'm going to do a stick with my car. Yeah. That's good. Heavy set. All right. Thought I'd give you fellas a hand. Thanks. Ready, you can start bringing the stuff in. Where's Space Patrolman, Dorch? Space Patrolman? Right. You can take us to your partner, Sprague, and Miss Martin. Hey, what is this? Go on, get moving. Hold your rigor on him, Hopper. Yes, sir. Hey, Commander. I can't move. Something's holding my feet to the deck. Someone turned on the magnetic force field. Holding our space boots. Get out of your space suit. Hurry. Commander, look up above. The cargo crane is coming down on us with an endurium beam on it. You've got to get out of these suits. The magnetic field on Earth, that beam can crush us. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Say, gang, how's your morning takeoff? Are you blasting off with your jets really roaring? Are you riding your bike like Buzz Corey rides his rocket? I mean, with your speedometer smoking like a volcano on Venus. In other words, Space Patrollers, are you supercharged in the morning? Well, here's the way Commander Corey gets supercharged. He tucks away a power breakfast with rice checks or wheat checks, the super cereals. Try rice checks today. What will you say? Delicious. Try Wheat Chex today. So swell tasting, you'll eat more and more and more and more. Rice Chex, Wheat Chex. The only cereals in the universe with that modern bite-sized design for easy eating. 
the only cereals in the universe with a picture of Commander Corey or Cadet Happy on the outside of the package. The only cereals in the universe with that mysterious magic space picture on the inside of the package. The super cereals that help the supercharge you. Rice Chex, Wheat Chex. And now back to our Space Patrol adventure, Peril Over Jupiter. Nelson Sprague and Duke George are extorting money from Carla Martin to operate the robot-controlled metals plant in the orbit of Jupiter's number two moon. The two men forced Carla to take them to the plant in her own spaceship where they overpowered the two engineers and are holding Carla. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy trailed Miss Markham's ship from Terra, then approached the metals plant in the small supply ship. Wearing spacesuits, they entered the cargo hold of the plant through the airlock where they found Duke Dorch. As the commander ordered Dorch to take them to Carla Markham and Sprague, a powerful magnetic field was turned on beneath the deck of the cargo hold, making it impossible for the space patrolman to walk. Then, from above, a huge loading train lowered a heavy endurium beam down upon them. George, who is not wearing metallic shoes, is not affected by the magnetic field. Commander, I, I can't get out of my space. There's something stuck. That beam will down off in a few seconds. George, cut that magnetic field. <laughs> You'll have to talk to Sprague about that. You asked for it, Corey. You weren't invited aboard, you know. Is that Sprague? Yes, it's Sprague. I'm in the cargo control booth watching you through a view store. Stop that train. Stop it. I only wish I could lower it faster. We can't lift that piece of the slide in the past magnetic field. You mean sort of statement? I pretend to try to dodge the train. You slide back to the airlock. And leave you here? But why can't we both? What do they say? How they kick me? That dodging isn't going to do you any good, Corey. Sooner or later, I can lower this beam on you. Keep out of the way, Dorch. Don't worry, Frank. Hey, the other one's getting away. Run over there and stop him, Dorch. Don't let him get into the ship. Yeah, okay. Hey, Pumbo, watch the train while I'm under it. Airlock, All right, Happy, when I give the word, open it and release the air escape valve. All right, Sprague, you can let all the air out of this cargo hold in just a few seconds. The cadet and I have space suits on. You can close our face plates and we'll be safe, but your partner will be in a bad way. Don't let him do it, Sprague. Stop him. Get away from that airlock. Then turn off that magnetic field and stop the train. Do what he says, Sprague. Please. Now, all right. Now, Sprague, come down here to the cargo hold and bring Miss Markham with you. All right. But remember, we've got your pal Dorch here. And you remember, I've got Carla Martin. Come on, Happy. Keep your ray gun on Dorch. Yes, sir. Go on, Dorch. Give me. This is the control room. Go on in and don't try anything. Welcome aboard, Commander. Commander, I tried to make him stop the train. Yes, I was forced to tie her up. Untie her. Are you hurt, Miss Markham? No, I'm all right, but my two engineers... What have you done to them, Spray? I was just about to tell you, You Commander. put them in the electronic furnace. All right. Now, now, Commander, there's no need to be alarmed. The temperature isn't very high in there. Yet. But if I were to turn this dial, it would be hot enough in that furnace to melt endurium in just a few seconds. Spray, get away from that instrument. Commander. I'll come a step nearer, Commander. And even if you shoot me with that ray gun, I still have time to spin this dial. And he'd do it, Commander. He really would. I don't doubt it. Well, that puts me in quite a strategic position, Commander. Unless, of course, you want to sacrifice those two engineers. I suppose you want a chance to get away, is that it? A little more than that. Miss Markham has some money in the Jupiter City Bank that I could use quite nicely. Torch and I are going after it. After Miss Markham writes it a check. All right. Just don't hurt those men. Torch, collect their weapons. Give me a gun, Happy. There's nothing we can do now. No, there's nothing you will be able to do. Dorch and I are going to smash up all the space upon equipment in this plant, including those in your spacesuits. Then we'll take your cargo ship and cut it loose in space. Here, Dorch, you guard them while I smash up the space upons. The sooner we blast off the people. Well, they certainly did a thorough job of wrecking the communications equipment. Mm, I'll see. Nothing but junk. But maybe there's a small transmitter somewhere that they overlook. Well, let's check with this Martin. Where'd you go? He's just trying to revive those two engineers. I'm sure had a close call. One twist of Sprague's wrist, and it'd have been part of a batch of molten endurium. Now, here's Carla now. Any luck, Commander? No. I really smashed the equipment. How are the engineers? I'm afraid we just have to wait till the ray gun effect wears off. We could revive them. We might be able to assemble a makeshift transmitter out of some of this junk. Well, maybe there's a small set they've overlooked. I'm afraid they got every one, Commander. Well, we'll have to see what we can do about rebuilding one ourselves. Where are the space upon parts, Miss Martin? Well, there might be some in that cabinet. All right, Happy, let's get busy. Mm-hmm. 
Up there in the rear fuscal, Frank. You didn't expect anyone to be after us, did you? I won't rest easily until Jupiter's just a pinpoint in that fuscal. Relax. We've got the money. As far as the bank's concerned, Carla Markham was just paying off a legitimate business debt. Yeah, I know. But we're flying her ship. She said I'll land us from nearby planet and get another. I've got that all figured out, too. There's a friend of mine on Mars who'll meet us in space. And we can abandon Carla's ship. Yeah, but what about Carla and Corey? We'll take care of them, Dorothy. That's where we're going now. The space plane. How are you coming, Commander? Oh, well, we're about ready to make a test, Carla. If the space phone works, we'll have help here inside of an hour. Yeah. Then we can go after Sprague and Dort. Connect this wire happen, we'll be ready. Yes, sir. Commander, isn't that a spaceship out there? Where that glint is? Yes. Seems to be coming toward us. Hurry with that connection, Happy. It's all ready, sir. Maybe we can contact that ship. If it's Sprague and Dort, we won't want to. Now, let's see if the set works. Yeah. The meter's checked, sir. Here goes. Attention, all space patrol units in Jupiter sector. Emergency message. This is Commander Corey aboard Markham Space Plant in Jupiter 2 orbit. Commander Corey aboard Markham Space Plant in Jupiter 2 orbit. Units in this region will proceed at once to the plant. Watch for stolen private cruiser JP450, possibly between Jupiter and this location. They got a space patrol. They got to stop them quickly. Yeah, but how? We'll wreck the space plant. This ship has an arm. We can wreck it with our rocket blast. We'll come in with our nose rocket blast. Uh, how, how do you know what part of the plant they're in? We'll destroy the air supply units. That'll fix them wherever they are. All right, George. Cut in those forward rockets. It's Sprague and George, all right. It's my ship. Crazy fools. They're heading right toward the plant without cutting speed. They probably heard our space phone want to put us out of business. If they ram us, they'll put themselves out of... Uh-oh. Hey, they've got nose rockets on. Man, did the space patrol hear your message? I can't tell for sure. We don't have a receiver. They probably do. Hey, what's Sprague up to? He's not heading for an airlock. Then why doesn't he cut his rear rockets? He's burning fuel at both ends. He's trying to wreck the plant. He'll do it, too. The air unit. He's going to wreck the air supply. Quick, Happy. Close that compartment door. He's got to seal this room off from the rest of the plant. Yes, sir. Secure sure, it, sir. Wow. They've torn up a whole hunk of the plant with their nose rockets. They'll keep blasting away till they're sure we're finished. A- and we don't have a doggone thing to fight back with. The space patrol would only get here. We're moving around for another attack. This time we probably won't be so lucky. We ought to get out of this control room. They'll probably blast this part next. Yeah, but we can't be sure there's any air outside this compartment. Then we're healthy. Now, wait a minute. When we blasted the air unit, they tore away part of the section next to the furnace. Yes, that's where the moat and endurium cooled and rolled in place. The metal's forced from the furnace through those pipes. Carla, is this the dial that turns the furnace on? Yes. Is there endurium in the furnace? Several tons of it. Why? Well, let's heat it up. We'll give Sprague and Dort something to think. All right, Dort, let's make another pass. This time we'll hit the control section. Look, well, let's not get too close this time. Suppose something explodes. Sprague, this is Corey. Cut your rockets. Don't waste time with an argument because we don't have a receiver. If you try to do any more damage, we'll blast you to bits. Listen to that, George. Who does he think he's kidding? Sprague. Look, they're firing at us. Hey, what are they using? I missed you on purpose that time, Sprague. We've got tons of molten endurium in the furnace. We can keep pouring it at you. George, cut in the forward rockets. We'll get him quick. Sprague, listen to that. That molten endurium can tear right through our ship. Do what I tell you. They've hit us. They're tearing us apart. Cut rockets. George, you hear me? Cut rockets. Oh, close, Greg. Look at the instruments. Our power's gone. They've knocked out our power. Greg, this is Corey. Your ship looks pretty badly damaged. Give yourself in the control cabin to prevent loss of air. Right. We are losing air. Feel that compartment door quick. Just keep calm, Greg. I've got good news for you and Dort. We've just sighted a space patrol squadron headed this way. Corey, out. Dort, did you seal that door? I sealed it. And before the space patrol gets here, there's just one thing I want to get off my chest. Yes? What is it? Just... Yes. Oh. <clears throat> you and your big ideas. An action preview of next week's exciting space patrol adventure in just a moment. It's a quiet day at space patrol headquarters. The dead happy is alone, gazing around in the commander's office. 
Suddenly, he sees a piece of paper on the desk that makes his head whirl. For there, in big black letters, Hap reads, The Space Patrol Microscope Kit Offer Ends Today. Jump in Jupiter. I wonder if the commander has seen this bulletin. Gosh, every boy and girl has to have one of these kits. Why, it's a real Space Patrol microscope, but it magnifies objects 15 times, and it's pocket size and all plastic, and you get four transparent slides with it, plus the mystery slide. Gosh, i got to tell the commander about this offer, and so he'll be sure to tell the gang about it. And so half hurries across the office, swings open the door, and Lambo crashes right into the commander. Oh, oh right on my foot. Well, I'm sorry, sir, but, 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 but did you know that today's the last day for the microscope offer? Uh, yes, I had Captain Tufeld announce it at the beginning of today's Space Patrol program. Huh? That's all. Hmm. Out like a light. Mike, <laughs> well, Hap had the right idea. It's very important to know that today is the last time we can offer the Space Patrol Microscope Kit. So hurry and send for it now. Just buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and a rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> and now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure. Commander Corey's ship has been forced to land on Planet X in the outermost regions of the solar system. Realizing that Prince Baccarati's powerful magnetic beam makes it impossible for them to control their spaceship, Buzz and Happy have stepped out into a mist-covered valley. Well, the question now is, where do we go from here? Head north, Happy, toward Baccarati's castle. Hmm. What's that? I don't know. Whatever it is, I don't like the sound. Commander, look! It's a gigantic lizard! The dinosaur happy and it's coming toward us. Get back to the ship. Very happy. Gaining on us. What a monster. Uh, quick, into the ship and secure the airlock. Uh, hey, hey, he's trying to get in. He's flying at the ship's hull. He's got to do something, happy. He's big enough to crush his ship like an eggshell. Be sure to join us next week for the menace of Planet X. When we check, rice check, and good hot Wilson again present Space Patrol. <laughs> Special bulletin for boys and girls in Akron, Ohio, Albany, Schenectady, and Troy, New York. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it. The Ralston Rocket. <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Cameron as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Deborah. <laughs> Other players were Virginia Hewitt, Norman Jolly, and Ken Mayer. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Check, Rice Check, and Good Hot Wilson again present Space Patrol! <laughs> Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local newspaper for time and channel. This program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network. <laughs>